I'm very excited to announce our next speaker, Nabiha Ahmed. Uh, she is currently a computer science major at Columbia. She's also a software engineering intern at Microsoft. And she has an interesting experience, both <laughs> being in college as well as how she landed her Microsoft internship. And I think there's a lot of value to unpack here. And also, she's a content creator. She created her own startup in like one night. Like, yeah. ama amazing stories. Like she, she's a cracked person. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, hope you guys enjoy this. And we'll just start out. Nabiha, yeah. who are you? Oh, I wasn't expecting that question. OK, can you guys hear me all right? Yeah. By the way, it's so nice to see everyone in this room right now. Like All of you are so eager about AI, which I'm proud of you guys for even doing this. So as Sajad mentioned, I'm a senior at Columbia studying computer science. I'm also a content creator. And I have a fashion tech startup called S Squared. But right now, I'm interning at Microsoft as like a backend engineer. But one thing I want to mention is in my very first CS class, I got a C minus, OK? Intro to programming in Java. And in my internship right now, I'm using Java. So it's, I've come full circle. It's been quite a journey over the past year. I started computer science actually last year, around the fall. So within this one year, I've decided, you know, this is something I want to pursue. Nice. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us the process of how you went about landing that Microsoft internship? OK, yeah. I'll make this super short and sweet, OK? Because it's a year's worth of stories in one. So when I came to college, I wanted to try three different paths, OK? Startup, freelancing, like creating my own um, business, and corporate. So the summer after freshman year, I worked at an AI startup as a digital marketing intern, but they also made me code front end work because you're an intern at a startup, you do everything. And then the summer after sophomore year, that's when I decided to, you know, pursue my own startup business idea. And it was very emotionally exhausting, <laughs> okay? That was like, okay, maybe this is not for me. So that's when I started to like bust down on lead code. I did blind, lead code blind 75. I studied for my coding exam the night before my exam. <laughs> and then I landed a final round interview with Microsoft and ended up getting the offer. So yeah. Nice, nice. And just curious here, startup or big tech? Hands for startups. Who's more interested in startups? OK, OK. Now hands for big tech? Nice. Oh, just about a 50-50? Yeah. OK, cool, cool. Um, now, I guess I'm, I've always been curious. People who work in big tech, there's always the notion that they're working on like super high impactful, like crazy things. Mm -hmm. You know, like I think uh, Faison over there worked on like some ML models as an Amazon intern. What's been your experience working at Microsoft thus far? So actually, my work does have a lot of impact, unfortunately. Fortunately. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of pressure on me. Uh -huh. <laughs> so. I can't speak too much about it, but what I can tell you is like the software I'm building manages about a billion dollars worth of revenue. Um, I'm on the back end side, so it's a lot of data analytics, um, finding out how to present certain metrics to clients, and in a way that's both like efficient, um, time, complex time complexity wise, you all guys know. And also just like problem solving skills, like how do you create software that's scalable at Microsoft's level, at a big enterprise level? while also getting those numbers. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, that's big work, a lot of pressure, obviously. Mm -hmm. But um, what are some of the perks that you enjoy at Microsoft? <laughs> I actually got to go on a shopping spree <laughs> with my intern perks. Yeah, there are a lot of perks. Uh -huh. One being work-life balance at Microsoft. You get DTO, discretionary time off. You can take as many days off as you want. Um, they also do give a lot of perks monetary-wise, like that shopping spree I was able to go to, which mm -hmm. was my favorite. Nice, nice. And during your time in university, did you do any like cool projects that like helped you get noticed by Microsoft recruiters? Yeah, actually, one month before my coding interview, I launched this app called Moment with my friends, and it went viral. Like the night we launched, it got ten thousand downloads, and right now we're about a hundred thousand. So. Thanks to social media marketing, I re really use my TikTok. A viral TikTok, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. And making fun of Mark Zuckerberg. So <laughs> that worked very well. And that actually got their attention. They asked me about it. Um, and now I have like a startup called S Squared, 
It's basically a fashion search engine that lets you find products from like small, minority-owned niche businesses. Mm -hmm. So those are my two projects that I really worked on. Sweet, sweet. And I want to get into the startup thing, but before we delve into that, and you're obviously a computer science major at an Ivy League school, Columbia University. What's that experience like overall? How's the degree? <laughs> the degree, it's amazing, guys. <laughs> So one thing about Columbia is it's a very humanities focused school. So I can't really speak for other schools like MIT, Stanford, or any other really good computer science school. One thing that really is emphasized in my school is learning like a language, you know, global core, physical education. So actually finding the time to focus on CS core classes is something you have to plan out. Um, and you have to be really intentional about it. So you know, plan out your schedule, things like that. Is it is it the top CS school? I don't know, but I make it work, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's, for sure. That's the message at the end of the day. Nice. Make your degree work for you. And being in Columbia, especially like in New York City, has that given you any like more advantages compared to like being in other places? 100%. I was able to get into fashion because I'm in New York. I was able to reach out to certain people on LinkedIn, messaging them on Instagram to get opportunities because we're all in the same vicinity. So your location does play a factor in the opportunities you receive, but also don't let that limit you. Social media is great to reach people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, let's talk about your startup a little bit. So just give us like a synopsis, what you did, how you built it, what's, what's it about? So I built this website overnight um, I started at like midnight and it took me 18 hours to make a full stock application. What I did was create a search engine like I mentioned. I scraped a bunch of websites, created like a very scrappy front end using Bootstrap, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, just to create like an MVP. I didn't think anything of it when I was making it. Like I literally posted the video thinking, okay, maybe like 3,000 people are gonna use it. But 3 million people ended up using it after the first week. And since then, it's been shared a How'd lot. How'd you get that reach? Social media. <laughs> like I'm saying, social media is the easiest way to reach con like customers without spending a single dollar. Like I've never spent a single dollar on advertising, marketing. I use my own platforms. I don't have investors. This is completely bootstrapped and it's been so successful so far. Mm -hmm. Nice. And what's your plan kind of going forward? Are you trying to grow more in like the software engineering corporate ladder career track or more on the startup side, social media side, fashion side? You have a lot of different ventures here. Second. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love corporate for the stability, right? And it's really amazing to learn from people at Microsoft like who are so talented, so knowledgeable and experienced. But one thing about me is I like to build my own stuff. You know, so that's eventually something I want to pursue in the future. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. For sure. And I know you being obviously like a woman in STEM, you've had your own fair share of experiences. Mm -hmm. And obviously like people, some might be able to relate. Could you share a few stories like? Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm, I'm like trying to look for the girlies in the crowd. <laughs> like raise your hand. Where are you guys? OK, Woo! shout out to you guys. No, yeah. So. It was definitely something I had to get used to because we all know CS is do like predominantly male, but don't let that deter you. Don't let that deter you because you're just as capable, you're just as intelligent, and don't let anyone else think you otherwise, okay? When I did start my work at, corporate, at this corporate company, that's the first thing I immediately noticed when I walked into a meeting room with all these CVPs, VPs, all these like people, leaders, I was the only girl there. <laughs> And I was the intern as well. So then I told myself, Nabiha, you can either turn this into a really good experience, make the most of it, or let this one thing deter you. And I was like, I'm not gonna let that. So I just went about my work, like I'm a full-time employee. And at the end of the day, I tell myself, I'm here to learn from people and help hone my skills. And I'm not gonna let anyone change that. And to all the girlies out there, just keep doing your thing, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't let anyone convince you otherwise. That's good. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned earlier how you started off not being really good at computer science. And obviously now you're at a top tech company, like one of the most sought after internships out there. Mm -hmm. How did you transform yourself there? <laughs> Honestly, the biggest advice I have is to change the way you approach learning CS. 
So before, when I did get that C minus in my Java class, I tried to memorize Java, guys. <laughs> and that's one thing you're not supposed to do when you're learning computer Wait, science. Wait, what does that mean? Memorize Java? I would memorize, oh, how to like, like steps, like, oh, this is how you initiate. Oh. Things. It's, <laughs> yeah, like, it was not good. So I really had to change my mindset in the way that I approached learning different languages and skills. Instead of like memorizing steps and knowing when to use certain things, you really have to think about it at a larger level, like hone in on your problem solving skills, critical thinking skills. One thing I really like doing is like creating pseudocode before I even implement any code at all. Um, this is really helpful with lead code as well, solving just like problems. And because of that, I was able to learn Java for my internship within two weeks compared to that one semester wow. <laughs> where I, I, couldn't, I couldn't write a line of code after the, taking that class. So yeah. really changing my mindset helped. Nice, nice, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I love how you brought up the pseudocode point. Mm -hmm. I always say like whenever I have a coding problem, first to solve it in English, then convert that English to pseudocode, then convert that pseudocode exactly. to actual code. It'll help clarify your thoughts, help clear everything out, you know? Um, I also wanted to ask, so as a person who's running a startup now, uh, do you learn more at your startup or your corporate job? <laughs> it's always an interesting question. <laughs> I'd say you learn very different things, okay? I know it's so ambiguous, but at my corporate job, I learn people skills. I learn how to talk to certain people, how to frame certain questions. Who do I approach to ask this question? And at my startup, it's so technical. I learn, okay, what tool do I need to like make this database work faster? And it's like very technical skills that you normally wouldn't get given like at an internship, your project's already determined for you. People already know what tools you're gonna to be using and you're basically pursuing that. But when you're building your own product, that's when you have to do so much research. You have to find out what works for you, what doesn't, what tool is better than other, what database is cost efficient. Yeah. And yeah, you really do get different Didn't you max out your credit card or something? I did yeah. actually. I did, guys. I don't recommend using an expensive database when you're first launching and you get a lot of users that you didn't expect to get and then your credit card max up. So yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool. And in terms of being like a startup founder, managing like big tech, social media, fashion, how do you like manage all your time? Like what what's your what's your day like? Like, oh, what does a day in the life of Nubiha look like? Unfortunately, I am the person that wakes up at 5 a.m., but not for the reason you think, okay? I like to have a slow morning. I spend three hours getting ready every day just to set myself up for the day. Because if I'm starting on the right foot, I will be so productive. But if I'm waking up at 8 a.m. and I have work in one hour, I will be so unproductive. You cannot get me to write a single line of code. So I really like to take time in the morning create intentions for the day, like, okay, this is what I want to do today. And that really helps me a lot. I also maximize my time. So if I'm on the subway commuting somewhere, I will be responding to emails. Every single time I have available, I will be using that. But I also give myself time to rewind. So at the end of the day, I spend three hours rotting, literally scrolling on TikTok and, you know, having that time for myself to just wind down because yeah. burnout is a real thing and don't let yourself fall into that trap of like just working constantly without giving yourself a break. For sure. I feel like tech burnout is a serious thing. A lot of people face it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now for you, what are some short-term and long-term goals? Oh my gosh, this is a question my parents asked me. <laughs> <laughs> Short-term, right now, obviously finish my internship. I have two weeks left, guys, wish me luck. Um, so I wanna see, you know, what that looks like at the end. And I'm at the point where I'm like evaluating, what does corporate mean to me? Is this something that I need in my career path? Um, long term, I do want to be like a fashion tech founder. I want to be one of the pioneers to really set the industry up. And I have a lot of cool things coming up soon. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Well, if you're ever looking for engineers to hire. I got you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you guys are so talented. Building like five projects, what, in like seven weeks? That's insane. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, those were the questions I had. Uh, and before we get to audience Q&A, could we get a round of applause for Nabiha, please?